Oh, so fierce. Honey, I am ready to turn my attention about that Greg if you don't have any ochre. Hey, why don't you add us all in dad book? Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Nikki Ashes. Welcome back to Let's Slay Dream Daddy, Nikki Ashes, Zaddy Hunter. Let's talk to Hugo, Craig, and Matt with one T because he has tattoos and works in a cafe and is very hands-on. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. And try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to postmodernism in Africa. You're completely discrediting the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. D dude, I have no idea what's happening. No, we're gonna talk to Craig, please. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. God bless Craig. How'd resistance training go the other day? Great, Little River here is a great cheerleader, aren't you, tiny bro? Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. Sorry for pooping on you. <laughs> she must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arms again and waves them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. <laughs> How are you settling in? Almost done. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. Nice. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal is for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. That sounds so good. She still does, though. Hey, she takes after her dad! Nathan, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter's fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable! The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Oh, so fierce! Look at her! Oh, the girls in this game are all queens! What is it, sweetheart? <laughs> it's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Oh, precious. Oh. Okay, Matt's on the list. Matt's on the toot list. He is a toot. He is on. Oh, we're on board. We're on board with Matt. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, no, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> hey, Nathan, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen Sita. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop? And my old college friend? And, uh, you're a teacher. Whoa. Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term paper? <laughs> Great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns from me. I'm very proud. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Whoa. Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Whoa. Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega! Are you smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into a gutter. Hmm. Unbelievable, excuse me. It sounds like... I don't know if it's just the shitty earbuds that I have, but it sounds like Hugo's voice sounds were recorded in a place with real bad reverb. I would know, I would know about bad sound quality. I would know. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Honey, I'm ready to turn my attention to Matt and Craig. I mean, no Kids, right? <laughs> Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants and nearly burned down half the yard. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half of my yard too. Nice. Hugo walks back to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hey, Ernest. Ernest Hemingway, I love all of this. They are a cute juxtaposition. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Nathan, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Oh. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in 8th grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh, yeah, good for you. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Shots fired, honey! Shots... Ooh! Ernest! Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. 
Well, that was, that was eighth grade. Can you smoke cigarettes in eighth grade? No. Ernest puts an earbuds and storms up to stand in the corner. Well, that was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. I'm so sorry, I'm having a really tough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. All of these dads are actually pretty cool. Even the vampire dad's pretty cool. See that right there? You can't say that. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine that we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Nice. I yell across... Nice. Did you hear that? I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Oh. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. And we can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Hmm. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. I respect that. I do respect that. Yeah, you're right, but it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relations with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. It's college when that happens. Oh. No, let us hit up your time. I think go meet some of the people around the neighborhood. Okay. Should I talk to... Can I talk to people again? Let me see where Robert and Byron... If Robert and Byron are doing the same thing, we're gonna skip. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, skip. I'm just gonna press space bar a lot. Is this ASMR for someone? Hey, am I making you tingly? Am I making you so tingly? Here. Wait, no, I don't want to talk to... I pressed space too many times and now I'm confused. You probably didn't know this, Nathan, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. He's unbelievable. Dad. I tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. Dad! Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Dad! Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we just pr appreciate the artist? Dad! I've never seen him make a mistake. Dad! Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Dad! Combo! <laughs> Please stop! All of the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. All right. All right, guys. The food's ready. Please inform an orderly barbecue. <gasps> Dad! Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Mm. Man, it's so wild how all us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Oh. Kinda nice, isn't it? It still feels like- it feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. Oh. Hey, why don't you add us all on Dad Book? Dad Book? Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Oh my god, my communication tool has just been revealed! Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad, so show me hate goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops, I'll help you figure it out. Ooh, honey, I have fibers in my eyeballs. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all train stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmencita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Burgers, networking, paranormal ice truckers. Let's talk about food. Sweetie, if I can impart any sort of wisdom upon you right now, and not that this was a bad situation, but if you're ever in an uncomfortable situation, always look for the silver lining. The silver linings get you through the other side. We ate rockin' burgers today, and it was good. Amen. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dad Book. Maybe I will. If I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Pet every dog. Not pet dogs. Did I tell you about when I was attacked by that dog? A man and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for the evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Uh oh. Is that okay? Of course, just keep me posted and be home before midnight. You got it. Be careful. I will. Make good choices. Okay. Of course. Call me if you need anything. Dad, you're not gonna do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? <laughs> what? No, I've never done that. I'll never do that. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were to kind of eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. 
I'm gonna work on some stuff, see how long I can sleep for it, throw a party. I'm gonna say, see how long I can sleep for it because that is most accurate to me. But the sun hasn't even gone down yet. I still have sleep to catch up on from when you were a baby, just let me be. I'm just relaxing tonight, have fun, okay? Great, see you later. Oh, finger guns, yeah, it's clean. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some Wine and Dine Mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil, just like making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food for real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one is about. It's just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo. You good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day off. Socializing. <laughs> Too many Fs. I check my watch again. And then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, 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 no. It's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meat Hell are not only assuaging my anxiety, not only not assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling and keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she with? Why didn't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God, it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally. Finally, she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. What's up? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Ugh, yeah. Why didn't you answer my texts? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh, oh whoops, I guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann... Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Mm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I don't like your attitude. I have a right to be concerned. I was scared. She's not giving us an attitude. Let's do I was scared because it's a little vulnerable. You weren't responding and it was just, just like when your dad, oh no, we took it to that, we took it to that place. Now we're really sensitive, dad. I have to stop myself from tearing up. Hey. Oh, Dad. I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Mm. These soft moments are <laughs> awakening. It's just a river of feelings inside me. All right. I'm going to go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? Alright everybody, thank you so much for joining me on this slightly emotional journey. What did we do today? We wrapped up the barbecue, we gave everyone their original voices, Amanda gave us a nice little tender moment. Guess we're just going to have to date some more dads next time on Let's Slay Dream Daddy, Nikki Ash's Zaddy Hunter. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're enjoying this. I hope that you are as eager for the next episode as I am because I want to get to business with some of these dads. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have a fabulous day.